<laughs> Neil, obviously, um, your final walk, final bout tonight in the UFC. Just describe your emotions after that tonight. You know, I'm pretty pleased with the performance. You know, the emotions just haven't kicked in yet. You know, you, um, I probably were able to think of the third round, so that's taking over everything at the minute. But um, it was fantastic out there. You know, I felt like I was at home in Dublin with the crowd behind me. You know, and he was really. He surprised me with his power, you know. He was very strong walking forward. I told him he threw it with such force, you know. He wanted to get me over there quick, you know. I was very surprised that he stood there. A lot of people are saying that he'd stand and bang and shoot for the takedown. he done it in the third round, you know. But my overall performance in there, for uh, my way age, just to say, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty much, I don't know what, he was way he was it, but I thought it was 1-1 uh, one, one going into the third. Um, he got the takedown and um, sank the choke in. Neil, you know, as we said, it's your last fight. Andy was there, your your coach, Andy Ryan, um, Paul Redmond. What did they say to you after the fight tonight? Um, they were praising me. They were saying, you know, I knew, I, was, I knew he was really good at taking the back. And, you know, when he went for that takedown, when he came up on top, they were screaming, don't let the back, don't let the back. But it was only an option taking a lot of shots. As in elbows, because he was really heavy when I tried to get that, uh, that half guard back. He was really heavy uh, on top, you know. So it was, a, it was a bad decision I made by giving him um, the back. He sank in the choke. I thought he was out of there. He was really strong. Like, he, knocked, he knew what he was going for. But, um, you know, I've given all in the, to this company. I've given all in every fight that I walk out with, you know. I never shied away from any fight that anybody I was offered, you know. But um, I just I just know it's got to come to the end of the road. The lads have supported me one hundred percent all the way, you know. They still think I have a lot of fight left in me, but you know, to me personally I put that at the end of the sentence and it's time to move on to something else. When you left the octagon, uh, Bruce Buffer made a point to come and greet you. What did he say to you there? He he said he he didn't know that was my last performance, you know. He didn't know I was retired and he wished me all the best, you know. It's fantastic when you've got people like his caliber coming up to you and and doing that, you know, it goes in um, the statement that I made in the UFC. You know, I'm, not, I'm only seven fights in the UFC, but every time I went out there, I gave it everything I've got, you know, and, and fans appreciate that. What's been the favourite moment, Neil? Obviously, Dublin, you know, we've, we look back at that, that incredible night when all the Irish guys won. You got the victory there. Is that the moment that stands out for you? Um, there's so many moments, you know, the two nights in Dublin. You know, the Chris Bale fight was really big for me because um, he was 10 and 0 walking, he was coming down from Flyway, he was. It was one to watch, you know, and they took him over there, you know, and surprised a lot of people. But, but um, I've enjoyed every bit. I've said it numerous times. I've enjoyed every single step of this of this journey, you know, when I hit the UFC. Um, it's just been fantastic, a whole lot of it. What do you do now, post fight career? Um, I just said there, I, I truly believe that every fighter um, has the biggest fight that that career coming up, you know, the biggest fight ever is is the retiring part, you know, is getting ready for that. A lot of people tend to go out from a dip from the, the highest onto another organisation to try and make a few quid and it always seems to end flat in the face in hospital on you know, in very bad situations, you know. Um, and that's why I'm stepping out now, you know, I didn't want to go down go downhill after making it to the top. So I believe that I've got a massive fight ahead of me now, as in how do I feel that voyage, you know? A lot of people don't, they don't ask these questions when they need to stand up and go to fighters after our careers and try to teach the people that's on the way up. To it. We're not all going to drive Rolls Royces and Ferraris and whatever else. We don't always end up with all this stuff, you know. People have mental, mental thoughts come into this, you know. So I think a lot of a lot of young fighters need to actually go to the fighters that, that have, have to do it in return and take a lot of advice from, from what to do after it, you know. What's one of the, what's the, I suppose, the one big change you perhaps would like to see in the sport, in the UFC, you know, talks of uh, maybe an association or a union or perhaps something the UFC could do, maybe a pension for some fighters. Is there one thing that you'd like to see happen for the next generation of fighters coming through? Um, it's hard, you know, I think the union thing is hard because obviously in Dublin, if anybody ever said to you about fucking unions, they, they rob you left, right and centre and do nothing for you, you know. Nobody's twisting their arms to get in here. Nobody's saying you need to fight, blah blah, but nobody is doing that. You're yeah, given the contract, if you sign the contract, go and fight, you know. Um, we're well, moving forward, you know. The UFC have treated me with everything, you know. We, we don't have anything to complain about, you know what I mean? But I just think fighters just need to, for their own thoughts, is to 
to not just jump in and spend everything to get. You know what I mean? It, it's a short window. It's not like a footballer's career when they sign for five, five years and they get making a lot of money. We don't have that. It's fight by fight. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is, you know? What, what is the void, Neil? What are you going to do? I know you've a, you've a new kid on the way. And, yeah. Um, that's obviously going to take up a bit of time and a few nappies and things like that. Sure is. What is the plan? Are you going to stay in the gym with Andy? Are you going to do some coaching? Um, do you know what? I don't know yet. I haven't made up my mind, you know. I said, there's, there's nothing. Is there a lot of options out there? You know what I mean? I've got a full time job, but as you say, I've got another kid in the way of five kids. I've, um, I'm just going to have to find something to do, you know. I have a lot of fishing rods. <laughs> so I'll be riverside. But, um, you know, I just don't know. And that's that's what scares me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That, that's what scares me. When when you think it's all over and it's done and you're not going to fight again, it's very frightening. Mm -hmm. It's frightening. To, well, what's next? You're well, losing a drive here. There's a drive to step into the octagon, and people just don't understand. If we had a one there and walked out, I'm still going to be really mentally down just because of one. That that buzz is gone. You know what I mean? That if just if we won there and walk back into the gym on the Monday, st t things still won't be the same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And people yeah. have to understand that that fighter hits the rock bottom. We build ourselves up here. <coughs> Even if we lose or win, we'll always hit that bottom again. You know, and it's time to build yourself up. You know, so I just I just don't know at the minute what I'm gonna do. You know, back to me probably in six months and stuff. And maybe you should. The same to the forest. Maybe you should make this phone call. The forest that you've always interviewed. And ask them how they're feeling, how are they doing financially, how are they doing mentally, you know, because every other sport has it. Why can't they do it in, in MMA? You know what I mean? Do you have a message for the, the fans? Do you have a message for anyone that's followed your career or supported you through your career? So look, look at the reception we got out there. I actually thought it was home in Dublin. It was fantastic out there, even when I was leaving the octagon. The fans have been amazing to me anywhere I went in the world. They've been fantastic. I'd like to take thank every single one of them off my heart. It's been fantastic ride, but it's just after coming to an end. Thank you. When you talk about these young up and coming fighters, when they look back on Neil Seary's career, what would you want them to take from it? You know, probably just the way that I conducted myself, you know. I believe that I conducted myself right in the way I went, you know. I never turned down fights. I never went out or won 50 grand in Dublin. I never went and splashed it and bought this, that, and you're all thinking that. It's going to come the next day, you know, that's what, that's what I'm saying to the people. This money will come and it'll go and it'll quit. Everybody's just spend, spend, spend at the start of their career, comes to the end and they genuinely got fuck all. You know what I mean? They've nothing to show for what they have, bar cuts in their faces and broken nose, broken noses. But, um, <laughs> you know, there always has to be a plan B. You know, that's, that's what I'd, I'd like to say to them, you know. Neil, it's been a pleasure.